What's happening guys, welcome back to the channel and to another video on the golf. So in the last one you saw we hit a massive milestone of finally getting a solid floor back into the car. I can't tell you how happy I am having that in the, floor, in the car, it just, yeah, we're well on the way to having a solid shell again and being able to drive it. Never actually driven uh, a Mark 1 Golf, so uh, yeah, I'm doing all this, might end up finishing it and hating it. Can't see it, but yeah, never driven one, so I'm looking forward to getting into this one and giving it a drive. So, that was that episode, what we're doing in this one. So at the moment, the plan for this episode is going to be, we're going to address this issue here, which is the where the clutch cable comes through, common fault on all Mark 1s, I think on Mark 2s as well. Um, it's just really thin walled steel, the rubber goes through, the cable, you, as you put your foot on the pedal, it ends up pulling through, it sort of um, weakens the metal, pulls the rubber through and it, it breaks on the bulkhead. What you can get from is this here, which is a, I think it's about a two mil plate that comes with rubber on the back of it or self-adhesive rubber. You can, however way it goes, that way, you just stick over on the outside, it strengthens it, does exactly what it needs to do. This car came with that on, but I don't want to do that. I want to try and make this side of it look as factory as I can. So, what I'm going to do, I think, is I've done this, it's all primed and ready to go. I'm going to fit this from the back. Whatever way it fits. Anyway, it fits in a way. I'm going to fit it from the back. Welded it all in, nice, um, nicely around the edge, fully seam weld it, and hopefully that'll work. If not, I have got another one of these that I can then put on the outside if I need to, but this way, hopefully it'll look as factory as possible. You may also remember from another video that we cut a bit of a hole in here when we're doing all these patches um, to make this a bit easier and there was a few other reasons. I made this panel, we'll weld that piece in and then that is pretty much this scuttle area about dealt with. There's a couple of pin holes in these panels that I need to go over and just put a little bit of weld in. But then we're going to move on to looking at sorting this edge of the uh, window reveal out so we can then put the new scuttle panel on. Now this has got a few bits, I mean that there isn't really rust, that's just where the spot weld drill's gone through a bit, so we'll be able to sort that with weld. There's a pinhole in it there, so we're going to have to try and either weld that or piece a bit in. Down here you've got, there's rot and it's gone. So here you've got bits of rust that have gone through, so we'll have to cut a piece out and put a piece in there. Try to weld here, um, which will now grind back and hopefully that's solid, but again this corner here, which will be challenging because of this, we've got to put a piece back into there. All doable all easy enough to be sorted I think. So we have prepped all of these parts, this is prepped, this panel's prepped and all primed and all ready to go. So I think all I'm going to do is sling the GoPro on, get these bits welded in and then we'll start looking at this piece. shake it oh, I forgot to charge the gimbal again um, just gone to film and it's dead so there's that in um, and sorted sort of dressed to a point and um, welded up I'm gonna be seam sealing this joint anyway so it is what it is it's in it's on it's gonna get sand end as well so it'll never be seen so that's looking good now I'm gonna move on to sorting this out which I've clamped in place using one of these welding clamps pretty happy with where it is let's just start try get a few tacks on it and hope it's all right now that part for the clutch repair comes from Heritage or from the factory where it's made, galvanised. Now I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I do know that galvanised isn't the sort of thing that you want to go well and it isn't very nice. The gases that it gives off are quite poisonous I think. So I've gone over that with a mask on next to the door with the door open and ground all of it back so it's back to clean steel for us to weld onto so we're not welding any of the galvanised. So engine both side, there's that done. It ain't the neatest thing in the world but it's on, it's in, it's clean. It doesn't look too bad. And there it is from inside the car. So obviously when all the dash is in, the floor panels are all on and everything like all the floor mats are in, you'll never see that. But it's nice and strong and hopefully it won't pull through again. It's fully seam welded all the way around. So hopefully that'll be nice and strong and we won't have the same problem again. It's now time to start looking at fixing this. Now it isn't actually as bad as I expected it to be. It is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Said it, oh, it will be, won't it? Right, let me show you what the problem is. 
and how I think I'm gonna go about fixing it. So up here, we've got a little bit here, which I think I'm just gonna put my piece of copper behind and weld to build that back up because it isn't that bad. It's gone black because I've already put cure rust on it. So we've already treated it um, for any possible rust in it. Now there, you see we've got some holes blown through. Again, I think there I'm gonna try and put the copper behind it, weld it and dress it and see if that alleviates those. Possibly the same here as well. Maybe not, that's gone a bit thin there. Um, but then here, I'm gonna cut a section out of here um, and make a new piece. Probably try and weld that. And then down here again, will be cut a piece out and weld a new piece in. So time to start on that. Not sure how actually see, but let's get rolling, get this bit sorted, and then we can start working on getting the actual scuttle panel back in. And there's that all fixed as well. So we cut a piece out here, as you can see by all this overlap of weld. This is all covered in by the scuttle, so it's not a problem. Um, we've remade this section here, remade this section here, and then filled a few of the bits in with weld. And that is now pretty solid and looking good. So that's that. We're no reveal sorted out now. It is now time to get the skull and see if we can get that fitting. Um, hopefully it's going to be easy. Um, I don't think it's going to be. Morning, right, gave up yesterday, it was getting a bit late and I got to a point of where it was going to take hours to progress forward. Knocked on the head there, when I had some dinner, had a nice chilled out night. Back this morning fresh and ready to roll. So, the next thing to do is going to try and fit this scuttle. Um, now, first problem, this scuttle is a left hand drive one. So we're gonna to have to weld these holes up so they're flat like these, and then drill new holes for the other wipers. Now I'm not 100% sure, but I think I need to check what holes they are. So I can't do that until I've spoke to someone on a forum, which we'll check and hopefully get the answer to. Um, but yeah, we'll have to drill holes in it to put the wipers back in the correct place because I think it was converted to a single wiper. Um, and I don't want that, I want doubles. It was only took one off, so yeah, I want, I want it back to normal. Um, this is obviously, uh, this is a heritage supplied clock and home panel. Um, and first offered it up on the car, um, and it fits pretty good to be honest. It, it's, there's a bit of a gap here and it, it isn't quite in line with things, um, but I took that off. I put the original one back on, and I'd say, the aftermarket one fits better than the one that came off the car. The one that came off the car seemed to have twisted a bit. So after many, many hours of fettling and cutting, grinding, hammering, all the ings, we've got the scuttle fitting where I want it to sit. I'm happy, it's nice on this, it's nice on that A pillar. Um, it sits about right along here and I've had a clamp and we can get it all in the right place and it will sit where it needs to sit. It looks as though this internal piece is sort of pinged back a little bit. Um, so we'll get it all in the right place, all clamped up. Now, what I did was, hung both doors, I put, um, offered the scuttle in somewhere near, clamped it in place, put the wings on. I've also put the bonnet on to get all the gaps right, try and get this gap correct, make sure that everything was sitting in the correct planes, that everything could sit where it needed to sit, because they're all the pieces that interact with each other. And the reason I put the doors on was to get the door set in the opening, then gives you the, the gap, between the wing and the door. So we've done that, it's all been on and off, on and off. I've lost count of how many times it's all been on and off. Um, but I'm happy to say that this scuttle is now about where it needs to sit. I also took the rubber off the windscreen to try it all in, to make sure that all of my corners and everything look correct. And I'm happy to say when that's on in the right place, it covers the corner and it'll look as it should. So yeah, we're happy with that. Both sides I'm good with. There's a little bit of hammering and fettling to get these bang on, but we're not far away. When I fitted this, this corner and this corner were flush with the bonnet, and in the middle it dived off quite a lot. Um, and I was worried that there was something not right, something was in the wrong place. But what I did was, quick grip, which is from my joinery days, Took the other buckle end off because it was too big with the buckle on. Put that inside the scuttle, clamped it to basically force this up past, way past where it wanted to be. Then let the pressure off this and it now is sitting absolutely bang on where it wants to be. So it just needed a little bit of twisting. There's a lot going on 
in a very, very small area on this panel. So I am not surprised in the slightest that it's twisted or it is twisting. When I take these clamps off, it's this end's wanting to twist and come up and all sorts. When it's welded in, it'll be absolutely fine, but I think it's just because there's so much tension in the panel because it's so small in the way that it's been formed. But it's where it needs to be. So, time to probably, we'll whip the bonnet off, put that safely out of the way again so it don't get damaged. Take this scuttle off, clean all the back of it. I'm gonna prime the back in proper primer and then I've got some, I think it's toolbox red or something, I'm gonna paint the back of it in. Uh, might have some black actually. We're gonna paint the back of it so it's got a nice coat of paint on because obviously it's not the easiest places to get into when we're painting the car. Don't really matter what color it is because it's never gonna be seen. Um, so yeah, gotta weld these holes up as well before it goes on the car. And we'll worry about drilling the holes at a later date. So a few more hours have passed. Um, I've welded these holes up, they're all done and sorted. And I've also primed the back, painted it black because um, obviously it's quite a difficult area to get to once this is fitted to the car. This area is all prepped. I've just double checked everything and I'm happy with the prep that I did on it yesterday. So now, really, let's clamp this on. Get it welded on. I imagine this is going to take me a while to get it back in the right place because it took me quite a while to get it there this morning. So. Yeah, you'll see me back when it's done. Okay then, all clamped in place, ready to go. This side is the side that doesn't fit the best. Um, we're gonna have to do a little bit of pushing and pulling as we're welding it on. Uh, down here, it fits bang on. Uh, windscreen opening, actually it's fitting better than it even it has done at all yet. This corner is about bang on. Um, might have to make a little relief cut. But well, first things first, let's get a couple of tacks in it, just to start holding it into place. Um, then we can start losing some of these grips and start working our way around getting this all welded on. Cheers, welded in, warts and all. No cleaning back done yet. That's the next thing I'm just about to get on with. Welded on there, all the spot welds, or plug welds all the way along. Welded up this side, and obviously plug welded here. I'm well happy. That's, uh, it's in, it looks pretty good. Underside's obviously nice and painted to protect it. Um, so yeah, get the grinder out, clean this up now, and see, put a bit of primer on it, see what it looks like, and then I suppose we better sling the bonnet back on, check it fits. And there we have it guys, welded in. Uh, it needs a bit of a tidy up knockabout and fiddling with this corner, make it perfect. The covers, I don't think we're even gonna cover it. So yeah, I'll be able to knock this about and get it bang on, bit of filler, we'll be happy with it. All welded on, obviously the holes for the wipers have been welded up. And same this side, this side looks much neater. Um, all, yeah, welded up, dressed up, looking awesome. So there's another little thing ticked off of the absolutely massive list that's still to go on this car. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. This is the sort of first time that I've put a bit of pressure on myself already with it. I started fiddling around with this yesterday and said to myself, right, tomorrow, 
that scuttle is being done, finished and on and painted. So that's done, you can move on to the next part that you want to move on to next week. And I can say, with I think 10 minutes to go before I normally go home, it's done, it's on, it's painted, and I'm filming this bit. So I'm well happy that that has gone to plan, if you like. Um, it's on, it looks good. I've tried the rubber back in and that's okay. Um, I've offered the bonnet on and it looks good. The wings, I've offered them on as well and it all looks okay. I've not bolted it all back on because the car's going back onto the jig and getting rolled over. So I can start cutting this side out, get all the floor out, all the chassis rails out, all the beam mounts, get all of that back as we did the other side um, and get that in. Now the other side, I think, the passenger side I think took me around, I think about three weeks because lack of confidence with fabrication, welding and cutting everything out, just everything, there was just a lack of confidence with it. And really knowing the process of how to do it all. So, my aim is, Monday morning, I'm gonna come in, cut everything out that I need to cut out, and I wanna see how far I can get in a week, cutting all of it out and putting new in. Now there is one thing that may hold me up, and that is this wheel tub here. So, I've got, the same as this side, I've got the outer piece, but this inner piece is shot at the bottom, shot at the bottom in the arch as well as inside the car and it's just got holes all over it so i wanted to replace that um unfortunately the company that heritage get that panel from no longer make it nobody else can, can no one can get hold of them the, the company that made them don't make them anymore so you can't get hold of one so i might try and get a body cut or i think what i'm going to do first is just try and repair it so i think that will be the bit that will slow me up the rest of it is just putting panels in and doing what i've already done to this side but we'll see how we get on with that. That's the plan for next week anyway. Probably won't be a video on the Thursday, just be a Sunday video. I want to say a huge thank you once again to Heritage Parts Centre for sponsoring the build and for supplying me with these panels that I've just put in. This scuttle was a supply panel by them. I should put a link in the description to their website. Don't forget, if you are buying anything from those guys, make sure to use the code CHAMBERS at the checkout to get 10% off your order as well. Massive thank you to those for helping me out and for getting the code back just to give that little thing back to you guys to save you a little bit on your projects. So that's another video done. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I do really, really appreciate it. I know I say it in every video, but please do continue to comment on the videos, like the videos, share the videos about, click subscribe if you're not already subscribed and hit that bell to get notified of when we drop a new video. It all helps massively within YouTube's algorithm of getting these out there onto people's recommended pages that might not know about us. So we'll leave it there, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. I do really, really appreciate it. Until next time, guys, enjoy. Booyah, in the bag.